Welcome to the Aramir Roundtable. Today is the 28th of January, 2019, and we've got uh, Dan Harvey and Amy Miser as our guests. So welcome, Dan and Amy. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Good to be Thanks, here. Tom. Welcome, everybody. And as everybody knows, uh, Dan and Amy and I go way back uh, many years, so um, it's a pleasure to have you both on. And uh, as everybody probably also knows, uh, the three of us are all running Tradler Services, and we're going to expand that a bit today. So uh, before we get started, let's do the disclaimer that uh, Aramir Corporation is not a broker-dealer or an investment advisor. This is for educational purposes only. Options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. And past performance is not indicative of future results. If you read, want to read the whole disclaimer, just pause the video on the recording or go to the bottom of any of our web pages. So with that, Amy and Dan, I'll turn it over to you and uh, I'll just put myself on mute. So uh, I'll be here, but I just want to, don't have background noise to distract. So take it away. All right. Okay, great. Um, uh, so I put together a little bit of a, a presentation slide here that we're going to go through today. And, um, you know, thanks again for, for joining. I know it's kind of um, tough sometimes to get here in the morning, especially during market hours. So I appreciate you guys um, joining in. And of course, this will be recorded for anyone who wasn't able to join live. So, um, so today, uh, we're going to be talking about something new that Dan and I um, have been working on. And it's going to be called the weekly playbook. Um, so I think you guys, uh, you know, I, we've heard a lot of um, requests for, you know, short term weekly trades, what can we do with weeklies. And so we put this together for all of those folks that have been um, asking for that. So I hope, I hope you're gonna enjoy this. Um, but before we get started um, on the details, um, I'm sure there's some new folks here um, that joined Aramir. So just wanted to know for those people that don't know who we are, a little bit about me and Dan. Um, for me, I began trading stocks and options in 1995 and became a full-time trader in 2006. Um, I specialize in monthly income and consistent returns um, and I do this usually just uh, as a neutral, um, neutral strategies during varieties of market environments. Um, I've done a lot of speaking engagements, presentations, and teaching uh, for numerous trading clubs and educational trading services, as well as, of course, I have um, some trade alert services here at Aramir, um, the Weird Ore, or also known as the Symmetrical Iron Condor, uh, the 14-Day and the Nested Iron Condor, or um, some of the services that I do here at Aramir. And uh, now, take it, uh, take it over, Dan, about you a little bit. If you want to say something about yourself, or you want me to just keep talking. <laughs> um, uh, well, um, it's uh, good to be here with you, Amy. We, like Tom said, we have known each other a long time and uh, good friends. And, uh, you know, hopefully we won't uh, fight too much when we're <laughs> working <laughs> together here. I don't think so. Uh, yeah. Uh, not, you know, I've been trading a long time. Um, I'm, I'm a retired uh, neuropathologist, neuroscientist, and uh, retired early because of some vision problems. So I turned to doing something um, to make a little bit. So I, I started learning to trade. And so that's been about the, uh, 25 years for options and uh, 30 uh, plus more for stocks and bonds. Like Amy, um, I've done uh, some teaching, <coughs> pardon me, and um, I've given uh, more presentations than I would like to count. Not as many as as a lot of people out there. Uh, not, I'm not really a fan of doing that, but I have done that in the past. And as Amy said, um, I I am involved with the Trade Alert Service with uh, Tom, namely the Road Trip Trade. Um, and that's about it for me. All right. Well, cool. So let's get started in what we're talking about today. Um, so short term weekly strategies, that is the, uh, the main subject for today. Um, and, uh, what we like to do with those. So obviously, um, we want to generate additional income and by doing these short term weekly strategies, it gives us opportunities for additional income each week. Um, that is the goal. Um, the other um, thing we like to focus on is small margin. We don't really want to tie up a lot of capital. Um, also, low commission costs. Um, because um, these trades can be just done as one lot trades, uh, very, very simple, um, the commissions are going to be really small as well. Um, and then, of course, along with that, 
um, we want to keep things very simple. So um, all of these weekly strategies will have very simple setups and simple management. Um, of course, that's what we want, especially considering that these are going to be uh, done on a weekly basis. So we want to keep things real simple. Um, and then, of course, we want to um, make sure that the goal will be to preserve capital with weekly income. And that should equal a positive expectancy. And I didn't know, Dan, if you wanted to elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, I didn't include well, the slide. Well, yeah, I'll just mention very briefly, uh, for those of you that are not uh, familiar with the concept of expectancy, it's, uh, it's uh, basically a mathematical representation of, of, you know, how well the trading system does. And... Um, it's well known that you can uh, that you can have lots of losers if you make uh, big winners. That's not what we won't be doing here. The opposite approach is to have a strategy with a a, a very high win rate and a very low uh, uh, loss on the average, and that's what we're going for here. We're going for a good win rate of, uh, you know, hopefully around 70% or more. And when we do lose on a trade, we will be taking steps to uh, counteract that. And Amy will discuss that. And that's what gives us the positive expectancy. There's a lot's been written about that. So anyone uh, tuning in that is not uh, familiar with that concept, I would refer you to the many, many articles and discussions and we have a couple of things on the Aeromir site related to expectancy. Cool, thanks Dan. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So the type of uh, uh, short-term uh, weekly strategies that we're gonna be talking about <clears throat> in the service are uh, credit spreads, uh, very simple. Um, simply buying calls or puts of directional plays. Um, iron condors, that's, um, uh, everybody I'm sure is familiar with what an iron condor is. And then we'll also be talking, uh, possibly bringing up some other ones as well. So those are the types of uh, things that you might be seeing as uh, short-term weekly strategies. Um, the weekly playbook itself, the, the service, will be made of, again, short-term trades with contracts with less than 14 days to expiration. Um, they will be done in stocks and ETFs. And we will be um, just showcasing one lot trades. Of course, you know, you guys can do whatever you like, whatever size you like, but these can be done as with very small margins, just a one lot trade. Um, each strategy in the service will um, have a different concept and we'll have a simple management guide to follow. So we'll, we'll be um, creating um, detailed guidelines and rules uh, for each one of these strategies that we are going to be introducing. Um, with that, we will utilize um, not just a screening process that we'll be doing um, to find um, good uh, um, opportunities or good um, candidates, um, but that we also will be utilizing technical support resistance trend, et cetera, as well as fundamentals for these. Each uh, strategy in the play weekly playbook will have multiple trade setups so that you're going to have plenty of opportunity to pick and choose what you want. Uh, to, to be um, involved with, uh, whether it's a particular strategy or just that, you know, uh, one or two um, of the trade setups within a strategy each week, but you'll be getting multiple, multiple setups for each of those. And again, we're going to be concentrating, uh, like I said, with the screening process on high quality stocks and ETFs with good volume and liquidity. Uh, again, we're, we're going to have um, some screening uh, that we're doing um, uh, both screening for um, uh, fundamentals as well as technicals. Um, did you want to talk a little bit more about that, Dan, or, or do you want to continue? Well, just very briefly um, to reiterate some of the points that you've already made, one of the keys to, to any sort of a, a weekly strategy using weekly options uh, is the uh, relative uh, uh, liquidity of the options. So that is one thing that I am very keen on and I set my uh, criteria, uh, the screening criteria I set accordingly. 
And so you want to have some good volume, some good open interest for the strike you would be taking, and you want the bid ask spread for that individual option to be relatively narrow because uh, one of the ways of mitigating losses, which Amy will talk about, is to roll these things. So you want to be able to get out and uh, put on another one to mitigate the loss that you have taken if you have to roll and perhaps you know, even wind up with a net uh, profit, which is obviously ideal. Uh, the other thing I would mention is that doing one lot trades, um, a realistic target would be between 100, making 150 to $200 a week with this strategy. Yeah, just with on a one the, so. Yeah, just on a one lot. Uh, if you did three stocks, we'll say with a wide put credit with a wide credit spread, as Amy will discuss. Um, if you average fifty bucks for a week on those for a one lot, that gives you one hundred and fifty dollars. Now we like to do a little better, but uh, uh, but that's the basic uh, goal here. Yeah. So yeah, and so that's all I have on this one, Amy. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so basically, um, this you know again, we're going to talk about that one uh, strategy that Dan was just talking about, but there's going to be multiple strategies. Um, so we do want to make sure that this um, service allows for plenty of opportunities for extra income potential um, with you know plenty of uh, trade setup. So um, that's the last um, point I want to make about the service right there. Um, and then uh, now to kind of get into what we're going to be starting with now because we, we want to be able to do uh, multiple strategies within this service we've got to get started somewhere and we want to see what kind of uh, interest everybody has so we're going to get started with what we call the wide put credit spread um, we just feel that this is a really good simple strategy to kind of get things started with the service um, it, it generates income with a high success rate um, it avoids tying up capital in stock ownership unless you want to use the strategy to, um, you know, acquire good stocks. It, it can also be used to acquire good stocks at a desirable price. Um, but uh, the goal of the strategy is to um, just, you know, keep small, you know, very small amount of capital tied up. Um, so very small margin and to, to create um, some additional in income generation with very low commissions. Again, only one lot needed to trade. And very simple management guidelines. So, um, you know, we're going to be going into uh, more detail on that for the subscribers. But um, for this particular um, strategy, we have uh, a couple of different guidelines, both a basic and a conservative guideline of a very simple strategy to uh, generate those additional, you know, some additional nice income generation, but also to mitigate um, any um, any losses or, you know. Um, uh, if the trades go against you, what to do in those in those cases and keeping that simple as well. Um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how that's done uh, over the last uh, several months. So um, uh, again, a little bit about the stock selection. Again, we're going to be doing, um, you know, we have multiple screening uh, tools that we use to uh, come up with good um, candidates. Um, with uh, high quality stocks and ETFs, and what, what are we going to be looking for? Good volume and liquidity, uh, good volatility levels, so that we can get some decent premium without having something go crazy on us, hopefully, um, and good levels of support. So we will be looking at not just fundamentals, but also technicals as well for this strategy. Um, the advantages of this particular strategy um, are that um, it has a high probability of wins. Uh, most can be closed with no adjustments in just a few days for profit. There's a very simple rolling strategy for adjustments that we'll be talking, uh, talking about um, in more detail with subscribers. Um, low drawdowns uh, if, you know, the adjustment strategy is followed. And uh, again, preservation of capital with weekly income um, to equal that positive expectancy that we want to have, uh, you know, more winners than losers to keep those losses as small as possible. Um, and a low capital requirement. Now, uh, you'll see a little asterisk there on the low capital requirement. Because this particular strategy is incorporating short, a short put, uh, and we're doing this on stocks, it can be used 
if you want to, you know, buy the actual stock at a lower price and collect premium along the way. But for those that don't want to do that, um, you know, we definitely want to incorporate this simple adjustment strategy that we have to keep these, uh, keep the shorts um, out of the money because you don't want to get a sign. So one thing that's um, important to know is even though there's a very low capital requirement for the actual strategy, you do want to make sure that if you want to buy the stock or if you're going to um, be in the money um, and you're going to get a sign that you have the, you have the capital to actually purchase um, the stock. And that's another reason why we're going to be, you know, focusing on very high quality stocks um, in this uh, strategy as well. Um, so let's talk about the results a little bit. So uh, Dan and I, I, I kind of came in later, but Dan has started this earlier. I've been trading this um, for the last uh, four months, uh, starting in October. So what I put together here is just the last of the results. Actually, this goes through, I think, the first couple weeks of, of January, not just through December. But basically, this is three months of uh, actual trades. Um, and as you can see here, uh, it made a nice little profit for three months. You know, this is, these are one lot trades, so very, very small. The total number of trades over this three month period uh, was 50. The total number of wins, 47. Total losses, three. Um, the largest win was $183. The largest loss was 187 and there, that's where that comes into play, where we want to keep those losses as small as possible. Uh, the maximum consecutive winners, 33. Maximum consecutive losses, two. So that uh, kind of falls into that, um, where we talked about that um, you know, positive expectancy, where we want to um, have more winners than losers and keep the lo losses as small as possible. And as you can see here, I've kind of outlined each one of those trades, uh, the actual underlying that we chose, um, and the actual profit or loss. Um, after, and this is after, you know, this is, you know, actual after slippage commission and so forth uh, for these trades, so these, these 50 trades. Um, as you can see, there's a little asterisk on some of them, and that designates uh, that those were trades that needed to be adjusted. Um, and all the ones without asterisks were trades that were just put on and taken off probably a few, few days uh, later for a profit. Do you want to uh, talk about this a little bit more? Dan, you want to say something? Well, I, I, yeah, sure. But I, yeah, that's, so I mean, Amy, get into some examples that, um, uh, that Dan uh, is going to go through just a few of these examples real quick too. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, first, while we're going along here, we have a couple of uh, questions and then I'll address uh, the slide that you're just now uh, showing. Uh, Kevin, we are, are, I think Amy does this, but but I do not uh, take any stocks that are going to have, that are going to have an earnings announcement uh, prior to the expiration period. Exactly. Uh, so I, I completely avoid that. Uh, and uh, um, Michael, uh, hi, Michael. Uh, why use widespreads? Well, that's a very good question. I mean, this strategy can be done with uh, naked puts, but um, I, uh, in my own personal account, I don't, I never make any naked option trades. Uh, the long leg of this frequently, you know, I will buy for a very cheap price and I'll expect it to expire worthless. Uh, I'm making my money on the short. And uh, while it's true that shorter widths will, uh, may have a better return versus risk, uh, to make any money that, that you can keep and spend, uh, you have to do quite a few contracts. And uh, I like to keep these with uh, one, maximum two uh, contracts. And I have found that I do a lot better. I have much, I have, you know, good results with one lots and wider spreads with a rigid, uh, rigorous, I should say, uh, protocol for rolling these options. And that will be discussed at a later date, I guess. And, uh, uh, but the planned capital, you know, for me, uh, for, uh, for each of the spreads that I do, uh, generally, 
I, I would say that my capital, I'm looking down my uh, spreadsheet as we uh, talk here, I would say my average margin requirement is probably uh, $1,200 to $1,500 uh, per, uh, uh, per widespread. Uh, I've ha I have had some bigger ones, uh, but I generally try to keep that relatively low. So, so as Amy said, if you do, um, you know, three or four of these a week, and if they all come in and you make 60 bucks each, you might make more sometimes, you know, I, I often make, you know, 80, 90, hundred dollars for these. It all depends on what the uh, stock is. Um, but uh, that is uh, your return uh, based on that margin and reading down my numbers here, my yields per spread uh, range from, uh, I'd say, let's see here, from uh, 3% to about 9% or 10% uh, uh, per spread. So that's the target that I'm going for. Um, sometimes it's more than that, so. And sometimes it is, yeah, sometimes it's, you know, substantially more than that. I'm, I'm just you know, trying to give some averages here. Uh, for the losses, um, I generally don't want to lose more than, you know, maybe 3%. And we'll discuss that at a later date of you know, how this is managed. Um, and uh, I would also mention that um, uh, while these are low capital per strike, as Amy mentioned, it is uh, very important that you have the available capital just in case you get an assignment. Now, usually these won't be assigned until Friday morning. I think Amy may discuss uh, some of the details. Uh, I'll just mention, I like to put these on on uh, Friday the week before and then the Monday of the week of expiration. But if we have a big down day like we are having now today, I'll go ahead and uh, do a scan and see what I can put on. And I, in fact, I did add some uh, uh, to my own account this morning. But uh, you do have to have the capital to uh, be able to handle an assignment if you get one a little bit earlier. I have had one assigned on uh, Thursday, um, and we'll discuss uh, that at a later date, uh, you know, how you can avoid that. And um, But uh, usually they're not assigned until Friday. Uh, um, but if an option is getting into trouble and if you don't want the stock, that's the time to roll it. Uh, and I would also mention... Oh, go ahead. I was, I was just going to say a quick thing about the Thursday um, is that we do um, have some guidelines in place so that uh, early, if there isn't a chance of early assignment, that we try to avoid that as well. So I just want to right, exactly. That. Right, exactly. And that brings up uh, the thing I was going to say next. Depending on the stock, um, um, you know, for example. Uh, for my own account, the stocks that I've had the most trouble with, you know, in terms of being forced to roll uh, um, more than once are uh, Facebook and Apple. So, uh, you know, a stock that moves a lot, uh, it's a good idea to be a little farther out of the money. You can use the expected move as a guideline in addition to the other criteria that, uh, that Amy and I use. Um, and and then in that same vein, uh, I personally try to keep, um, I try to use only stocks that are less than $175. So if I'm assigned a one lot, that's going to be 17500 Now that's not a, uh, that's not an absolute uh, criterion. If you have a good stock that's a two hundred and fifty dollar stock, and you wouldn't you wouldn't mind owning the stock at uh, and pay twenty five thousand, uh, then no problem. Oh, and let's see. Just to finish up the questions, then I'll give this back to oh, Amy. Yeah, I was gonna uh, answer. I can answer the the rest of the questions if. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Amy. Yeah, go ahead. Um, 
Uh, so yeah, we'll answer the rest of the questions here. We're going to continue, and Dan's going to go through some uh, uh, screenshots of some uh, some of the trades and kind of what they look like graphically. Um, so uh, Alex is asking how many trades at one time, and I got the same kind of question from Ian as well. So basically, what we're doing with this weekly playbook is um, this is the wide put credit spread is going to be one of more. You know, there's going to be more than one strategy. This is just the first one that we're putting out. Um, but each strategy we're planning on having multiple, um, uh, multiple uh, um, trade recommendations. Uh, so for this particular one, uh, usually uh, what we'll try to do is, is give you, um, you know, anywhere between two, and two to five um, um, trade setups. Um, most of the time are going to come out on Friday. And then if we see anything additional that looks interesting on a Monday, we might uh, uh, give, give a couple more, one or two more on Monday as well for this particular strategy. So, uh, you know, definitely you'll have several um, things that you can look and choose from. Um, and then as far as uh, how many uh, are commissions included in the, in the numbers here, Tom's asking, uh, yes, those, those are uh, commissions are included in this number. And I think for most people we're getting um, a dollar or less per contract, and since these are all one lots, uh, you're just talking about a few dollars um, because of the because you're actually doing the spread, and then of course a few of them were rolled, so there was a, a couple more dollars of uh, commissions on top of that. We're just talking about a few a few dollars. It's not not taking up too much because this is these are just one lots. Um, so let's um, continue on here. I, I um, put together a few slides. Um, for Dan to talk about, um, and then I'll just kind of, uh, because this is on my computer, you can just tell me when to go to the next slide. <laughs> so we're going to start off with uh, a trade in cat Caterpillar. Um, yeah, okay, now I am not remembering exactly how this, you know, how each one. of these worked out. Yeah. Is this just the beginning slide then? Uh, yeah, so this one was the one started um, February 23rd, mm -hmm. um, and um, this one, I, I think, I thought I sent you the information. Sorry about that, guys. I, I, I think, I think you, you may have, I, I, I think you may have sent it to me, but unfortunately, I don't really have that at my fingertips, so I'll just muddle along here, and you can uh, uh, tell me. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, generally, it's not really necessary when you're doing these to actually look at the risk graph, but it's good to show from the point of view of approximately uh, where the short strike would be uh, placed relative to the current market. So you get a feel for, you know, how much out of the money that, that you are. Now, whenever anybody that is new to trading sees a risk graph like this, naturally the first impression is, you know, oh my God, look at those curves going down. And yeah, they, they, they indeed will go down, uh, which is why we, we have a rigorous adjustment protocol in place so that we're not uh, going to, uh, to get those uh, profoundly negative numbers down there. Uh, but this is approximately where you would uh, start yeah, yeah, Robert, actually, uh, I have a, a collar on a cat and I have uh, sold a naked put against it. I'm, I'm uh, perfectly happy with cat. Uh, but yeah, it is down today. But, it, but I made money on this one, as I recall, Amy, I can, I guess yeah. the, yeah. This was so, on November 23rd. Yeah. yeah. So we can go okay. to the, uh, yeah, we can go to the next one. And, and as you, uh, you see know, here, the, the trade was uh, just so, uh, you know, it was trading around 122, 121, and the short was at 119. Um, and also, uh, as you can see from the graph here, uh, the, um, uh, the maximum margin for this was about $1,100. Yeah, and, and of course, obviously, you can... Uh, you can uh, do a paper napkin calculation of your margin just by subtracting the strikes. And this is about uh, where I usually am. So, uh, you know, a lot of people would do credit spreads in the manner of say selling the 119 and buying the 117. And okay, that's perfectly fine. Uh, 
uh, that'll bring you in maybe uh, 15 or $20. Uh, that is not, and I have, I did that approach for many years. I'm not putting it down, but a one lot is uh, not gonna do much more than buy you a latte. So I like this method with the caveat that I will have a rigorous uh, protocol for making adjustment if uh, things start to go bad and, and they don't all come in. Uh, you know, adjustments are necessary. But that's, I mean, that's why I never do more than two lot because I want to keep the commission costs uh, low and I'm going for that uh, positive expectancy. So anyway, so now we're moving on here and uh, this one is obviously a winner. Uh, I, I don't know exactly when I took this off, but this would be a point at which I just would uh, close my long. Sometimes I'll put in a good till canceled order to uh, sell the short uh, you mean close your short? I, uh, yeah, sorry, I had that backwards. I will close the short, and then sometimes I'll put in a good till canceled order to uh, sell the long at a nickel. Sometimes I get it actually, so that just uh, you know, I have eighty. I have eighty cent, you know, commission. So if I sell it back for a nickel, no prob. Um, hi, Mary Ellen. Um, well, um, I like to do collars. Uh, I'll have to discuss that with Amy. Obviously, that would not be a part of a weekly strategy. You know, well, other I think we, than, did, we did discuss we did discuss doing uh, a weekly strategy within a collar. That was yes. one thing that we discussed adding to the service as well. So yeah, yeah we, we are going to be discussing additional um, strategies. We are, we already have a couple of other ones that we know that we're going to introduce or at least one yeah one or two others that we know that we're going to introduce but there was a couple others and that was one of the ones that we've talked about so that uh, because All you right. can't turn that into uh, a weekly strategy right and i have i i currently have about three or four collars on and i sell weekly puts against the long put you know of the collar and uh you know i sell the short strike on a weekly basis the far out of the money and if I plan on, you know, holding the collar uh, trade for a couple months, if I make you know, 50 bucks a week on the weekly short uh, put that I sell against the long, that's an extra $200. Mm -hmm. um, um, oh, I wanted to, uh, uh, somebody was asking what the price with cat was. It was at 122, it was around 122 at the time that this trade was entered. Yeah, okay. And uh, I'm sorry. yeah, Bill, those would not actually be weekly collars. I mean, the collars that I put on are about uh, uh, 45 to 60 days out for the short uh, call, or actually I, I usually do a, a, a bull call spread instead of just a short uh, call. The weekly aspect is selling uh, weekly puts against the long put of the collar. And, and then to, um, to address, uh, uh, to address Alex's question, yeah, unfortunately not going to have time today to, uh, to go into the calculations of uh, positive expectancy, lots of articles on there. And we do have some uh, presentations on the Aramir site uh, regarding expectancy. So if you, if you want to tune in there, uh, but, but unfortunately don't really have the time now to uh, discuss the calculation, but uh, yeah, just we'll, in, that we could talk about in more detail on the uh, live, um, right. the live uh, webinar or whatever, we're going to have uh, the live and, event and once we get everything set up uh, for the subscribers. So That'll right, be... and I can show some slides on that and, and give some information on the various uh, factors that go into calculating expectancy. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay. Uh, this is a Disney trade. Disney was trading at about 110. So and, this is, yeah, this uh, is not quite as far out of the money. Yeah. Uh, and this is only a uh, seven wide. But uh, this is, you know, again, um, 
uh, 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 the $100 that, uh, that I would like to take in, that's, you know, usually I will go for um, uh, 90 bucks to 130, $140. Uh, for the initial run. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, for the collars that I mentioned earlier, just to finish up on that, I, I, you know, I want to go way out of the money. So I may only, uh, so I'll sell an option that may only bring in, you know, 50 bucks. But, you know, I do this every week for two months. So that uh, still pays off. But, uh, but for the weekly wide put credit spread, this is, uh, this is what we usually do, although very often the short strike will be a little farther out of the money. So we can probably go ahead to the next one. Okay. Yeah, and this is, um, the, the thing with this setup was um, also notice that uh, it's got a very small, again, this one's only about $600 uh, margin for this trade. Um, and the next slide here, one day later, uh, we went from 110 to 113 at a pretty big pop in Disney. And uh, it's time to take it off. Right, then this is time to take it off. And and the reason that the margin is around uh, 660, it's easy again to do a paper napkin uh, thing. 109 minus 102 is uh, 700 and, you, and you know, getting $100 for uh, credit for the short. So there's your $600. Uh, we have quite a few of these that we can take off in one or two days. And so one of the things that we will probably be doing is on a, a big down day like we've had here uh, today, that's a really good opportunity for selling these things. And that might not be on a Monday or a Friday. So I think Amy uh, will probably- well, We'll definitely be sending out some bonus trades. We have a good opportunity to get into them for sure. Plus there'll be other strategies that are um, sent out on different days of the week. So, uh, but something like this where you have a, a great opportunity to, uh, for a specific strategy like the wide put put spread, um, we'll definitely be looking at, um, you know, bonus bonus trade setups to send out as well. Well, right. There'll be lots of things, lots of different uh, strategies that can be employed and, and, and you know, Amy is going to send out the stuff and we're working together on this. So there, uh, there'll be a lot of uh, things for everybody to trade. But I just wanted to say that it's, uh, it's not infrequent that you, can, uh, uh, that you can close these in a day or two. Uh, you take your money and you get out and you wait for another one. Yep. And then um, I did want to show another example that we'll talk about here of Microsoft. Um, where uh, we actually did have to employ uh, some adjustment strategy to this one. So this one was uh, Friday, December 28th. Um, and uh, you can take it away from here. So this one was yeah, like Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft has generally worked out uh, pretty well for me. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes it does need an adjustment. This one did. You know, as I said, the more volatile stocks like with Facebook and Apple, you, you got to be really careful with those. Those are the ones that I uh, that I've had to do multiple rolls on, and I don't really like to have to roll more than you know two or three times, and you know, preferably not at all. But uh, I certainly don't mind rolling two or three times if I net out a profit. But you don't want to get uh, too deep in the hole. So sometimes if you have a volatile stock and it goes against you, like Facebook and Apple, you know, sometimes it's going to be very difficult to dig yourself out of the hole. Microsoft generally works uh, fairly well. I had a question from Kevin. Uh, we don't, you know, I don't look at uh, Delta as a, a primary uh, sort of criteria you know, to select, but I will tell you most of the deltas that I put on, the deltas of the short are around uh, 17 to 19 to 20, but that is not the way that I actually select them. Now we look but, more at, um, uh, you know, premium is one thing, but also again, the, the stock screening process of trying to find, you know, good quality, good volume, um, uh, good fundamentals, and also the technicals of the underlying are important to determine um, which stocks we choose and as well as which um, uh, strikes we choose for the short. 
All right, and and uh, you know I have found that regardless which of the strategies that uh, that Amy is going to use, whether it's uh, a long option or a uh, credit spread or whatever, um, it is vitally important to uh, uh, to pick uh, using more than one simple criterion. That that will get you in trouble. You have to look at the entire stock. I even look at the earnings, you know, and see what they've done in the past. See what we uh, we expect them to do. Lots of different criteria before I will take the trade. So I don't use delta as an initiating uh, type of uh, uh, criterion, but I I just you know, have noticed that most of my short deltas, uh, short strike deltas, are in the 17 to 20 range. Okay, and, we can and, uh, of course, also we will. Um, uh, I, I, actually, I think you you answer the question. Never mind. I'm just gonna. We we'll probably answer. move on ahead then and see yeah, what's. Um, but. Okay, so here's a situation where um, Microsoft. Uh, uh, I mean, how many days later is this? The twenty eighth. So, uh, this was on a Friday. And then the following Thursday, we were doing pretty good. And then the following Thursday, could could have taken a profit earlier, but not at the target. And this will happen um, sometimes. This fell, one obviously. Fell below. Yeah, this one obviously went in the money, and that that will happen sometimes. And uh, now there may be some people that would be perfectly happy to take Microsoft at uh, ninety nine. But uh, I really don't like to be assigned, so I uh, I rolled this, I guess, on the Thursday then. Yep. So this one uh, was rolled. We did our, one of our uh, part of the strategy of rolling it. We went out in time and still allowed, as you can see here by the graph, it still allowed for a profit potential for the trade. So, so as well as giving it more room. All right, so uh, this one still has the uh, the four January long. I just left that in. You're probably not going to get anything, although you might. That you know, if you can sell that, uh, and then and then do the roll, that's perfectly fine. This one I just left in, so I'm I'm guessing I I couldn't have gotten, uh, might not even have been able to sell it for a nickel. But uh, this is what we want to do. And now you see the new strike is out of the money again and rolled it out a week in time. And it's just, you know, simple uh, roll on your uh, platform. You just, uh, you know, go out a week and uh, pick a spread. And, you know, Amy will, uh, will send out some criteria for that. And you do the roll and uh, now you, you have to wait another week to get your money. Um, but you can see here, we're, you know, what we're trying to do is mitigate any large losses. Again, try to keep that small. So, yeah, well, yeah, and that's, yeah, that's the key thing. I mean, uh, uh, the, the 4 January had already gone in the money and we were not down much and we don't want to be down more. And if we can roll this and actually still make a profit, that is ideal. And then if we go here one day later after that, uh, Microsoft rebounded and, you know, little, you know, it's not much of a profit, but we're not taking a loss and we're, you know, trying to keep things, uh, you know, there's going to, again, there's going to be multiple opportunities, multiple trade setups. So um, trying to have multi more winners than losers and keeping the losers smaller or if things go against us, trying to get back to break even um, in a short amount of time. And in this case, making a small profit is kind of the goal to kind of keep that positive expectancy going. Well, that's exactly <laughs> right. And it's better to take a small profit or even a, a very small loss by doing a roll than it is to leave the thing in there. And of course, you know, if you don't roll it on Thursday or Friday, um, you risk assignment on the following Monday and you don't know what's going to happen you know, over the weekend, uh, which is why I, I, I nearly all of the roles that I'm forced uh, to do when they happen, there's not that many, but when they happen, 
Uh, I usually make sure I don't do it later than Thursday just because every now and again you'll actually have one that is assigned overnight on Thursday and you know for me this has only happened to me once which interestingly was with a different um, no it was it was on Conoco uh, I got assigned I, I turned on my computer on Friday morning and I was assigned that's the only time that has happened, but it uh, can happen. And I didn't, I wound up basically breaking even on Conoco, but I had to sell a bunch of uh, covered calls against it to get back to break even. So I don't like to do that. So and basically what we, you know, part of the guidelines that we have in place are to avoid to be, you know, that we set up, um, are set up to avoid uh, assignment on Thursday night. So that that something like that should you know i mean it shouldn't actually happen so um but if if it's skipped then there are different strategies that can be done like you said so in calls doing a um a covered call strategy to kind of get out of that but uh the purpose of this strategy would be to follow the guidelines so that um you wouldn't have the short on um uh, in a situation like that on thursday over thursday night um, to it so that you can avoid the, the assignment unless you of course want to stop right exactly and uh, uh, let's say a question do you uh, do you pick stocks that are in different uh, sectors so the positions don't all show a loss on certain days well I do look at the sectors and I I do try to keep and I, I think Amy does the same thing I do try to keep sort of a balance but I I don't say okay I've got to have one from uh, the tech sector, I've got to have uh, one from the internet sector, I've got to have a stock like Disney. I don't do it that way, but as you can see from the mix that Amy has shown, uh, not everything is a, a tech stock. We do have other kinds of stocks, and I think we'll do the same thing with uh, long options and yeah. If we do incorporate uh, collar trades, uh, I definitely have different uh, sectors in the co the uh, the collar trades. And also to answer SB um, question, do you place trade in its early, earnings week? No, we do not. Uh, we avoid the earnings um, expiration. So, um, so let's continue here. So that's a few samples. So a couple of them, which is the typical where they're just in and out, and then one where there was actually a roll. Um, what that might look like uh, based on some past trades. And then as far as uh, what you're gonna be getting with the service here, um, it's gonna be, again, based on short-term weekly strategies. Uh, we're gonna start off with the, the wide credit spread, but we are gonna have more coming up very soon. Um, there's gonna be multiple trade setups each week for each of these strategies. Um, for each strategy, we're gonna uh, do um, a, the guidelines, the detailed guidelines and rules, which we're gonna be starting with the uh, why put credit spreads and we're going to be um, setting up a, uh, a live event for that starting on Monday so we, um, to you know get everybody kind of signed up beforehand before we start that and uh, go over that so that you're, you're ready to uh, you know take advantage of this uh, strategy and, and know what to do going forward and um, we're going to also include uh, weekly video recaps um, as well as a private forum uh, so you guys can talk to each other and then we can kind of pipe in as well um, uh, to, uh, you know, to talk about the, the trades that you might have taken um, and, and you know, everybody's going to have a little bit, little bit of a different uh, take on things and uh, the timing, you know, uh, maybe you have a different strike, that kind of thing, but that'll be a nice place for everybody to kind of um, talk in a private forum about the, the various trades. Um, and what we're normally, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to start this program out at $129 a month. Um, and of course, we're gonna be adding more strategies. Uh, but because this is a brand new thing, we wanna give you guys a special. So we're not going to uh, charge $129 a month uh, if you, uh, you wanna get started on this. Um, we are actually only gonna charge $99 a month uh, during this launch um, special um, for the week. And um, the first month is gonna be 50% off as well. So uh, this is gonna be good until uh, Sunday, this coming Sunday at midnight. So that gives a whole week uh, to sign up. And then anybody who signs up during this week 
uh, the price will never change. It'll always be 99 bucks a month, but the first month is only 50% uh, of that. So only uh, 49, 50, 50% off the first month. Um, and then in order to sign up, oops, let me get this out of the way. Uh, the uh, sign up is at aramir.com forward slash playbook. Uh, and that'll go to uh, the sales page where you can uh, sign up for the service and uh, that'll give you access to the, um, uh, to the class page. And again, we're gonna be starting off with the uh, wide put credit spread, which is what we've been talking about, adding more strategies um, and um, uh, as well, uh, but first off starting with that one and starting off with that first live um, presentation of that uh, the following Monday, uh, which I believe is the 4th of February, I believe. That's what we're planning yep, on that's doing. Right. Uh, let's see, so February, uh, February 3rd, midnight is the end of the sale. February 4th is our live event for subscribers um, to go over all the details of the first strategy and get started. And then on February 8th, which is that uh, Friday, we'll, we will start um, the very first trade. So you have plenty of time to kind of get up to speed and take advantage of the very first uh, trade setups that we're going to be sending out on Friday, uh, February 8th. And then, of course, beyond that, we'll be adding uh, other uh, strategies as well. So I guess we'll see if there's any other questions. Uh, I put the link in the chat, too. You put the link in the chat, okay. And did you add the, uh, the link to the, um, the non-member website, too? I didn't know. I did, did. So yep. Cool. Uh, and yes, Robert, uh, alerts will be done by email. Um, and I... Um, uh, will be sent, you know, sending out details in that email as well. Um, the commitment is just for, right now we're just doing month to month. Uh, the first month is 50% off. And then after that, um, anybody who signs up within this first week, I guess it's for 99 bucks a month. Um, and uh, one of the, uh, one of the screeners we will be using is Power Options. And then I also have additional screeners that I'm gonna be using. Um, from a, uh, um, a within think or swim um, and um, yeah I don't know if, uh, and then there's of course a, a lot of uh, analysis that we'll be doing technical and fundamental um, using other um, services as well to come up with uh, to come up with uh, good candidates for this so And then to answer the question, was this strategy backtested? Well, it was backtested by me to a certain degree, yes, but it had, but this is not a brand new strategy. I mean, uh, uh, you know, put credit spreads or call credit spreads have been around forever. The differences are in the approach with regard to stock selection, with regard to uh, width of the spread and with regard to uh, the methods of adjustment. And for uh, what we'll be doing is actually a sort of a modification of a strategy which has been around a long time using widespreads and rolling. And uh, so, yes, it has been back tested. I, I don't, you know, I don't have my, well, I wouldn't give it out anyway because I never give out any of my private trades. Uh, and also, just, it's, kind of, it's, a, it's a little bit different. Um, Backtesting this type of strategy would be different because you don't know what, uh, which candidates are always going to be best. So, in other words, you can't necessarily backtest it where you, you think you're going to get a trade in the same stock every single week uh, for the last five years, so to speak. It could be, um, you know, the stock screeners that we're using might give us um, screens for completely different um, stocks um, from one week to the next and certainly from year you know one month to the next or one year to the next um, as well as doing fundamental and technical analysis on those which would be um, you know could we could you know then obviously narrow our list down to the candidates that we think are best suited for that particular moment in time so that would be um, the, the, you know Kind of, kind of, kind of add a twist to trying to back test it because you're not going to use the same stocks all the time. 
And Peter asked, uh, will the alerts be sent via text? Um, if Amy, and I'm not sure how you're planning on sending the so messages. What we're going to be, yeah, what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to try to set these up so that um, you have a very small window of time. You know you're going to be getting an email with more detail of the trade setups um, in the email than just a small little text. The text messages um, I'm going to be using as a very, in a very limited way, mostly to just kind of give a heads up um you know uh, information more like you know notification not exact alerts because the more more of the detail is going to be sent in the emails and they're going to be sent out on certain days at certain times so that you know when to expect them and then this is and also because there's going to be multiple um trade setup um uh, trade setups uh as uh, you know ideas to send out that you may or may not want to take um There, you know, it's going to be a lot more information in an email showing all the different trade setups uh, that you can take advantage of if you, if, you know, and skip which ones you don't want to, want to do. And then in the weekly videos, we'll kind of highlight and go over some of those um, setups as well and, and see how they might have played out during the week um, to give a little more flavor. The detail in the, um, the trade strategy guidelines and rules, the, the live WebEx we're going to be doing, I will be doing those for each of the strategies and also, of course, outlining that within the, um, the class page as well um, that you can go and review for each strategy, how the strategy um, uh, should be played. Um, we're also, uh, you know, we'll, we'll outline that in, in detail in a document as well as in this live uh, webinar that will be recorded uh, next week. And then you can kind of follow along as well. So, um, Dan, did you want to elaborate on that? Well, just to, uh, just for the purposes of clarification, uh, you know, Amy's service is not going to be an alert service in the strictest sense in terms of, you know, okay, um, you did the uh, caterpillar spread. Now you should uh, roll to such and such a strike the next week out. It, it's not going to be an alert service like that. Uh, you, you know, each of the subscribers, you'll have the guidelines but we we don't know what you have taken and what you haven't taken so it's it won't exactly be like the the road trip trade for example or the weirdo service it won't be an alert service like that right there's just going to be there's going to be too many um trades setups but again these are going to be all set up to be very very simple setups and simple uh, guidelines which you will be given um, to follow along and um, and then again I will be using in the forums also we can be discussing things I will be using um, the, the just the text alerts to just kind of give heads up hey you know, you know, um, you know more like a notification thing but it, it would be a little tough to follow along exactly that would be more like a uh, you know a day trading service where you're on a chat room to follow along with every single trade um, that possibly somebody might have taken. So this is going to be more of a trade recommendations um, and giving you enough of them to um, pick and choose which ones you might want to want to play with, and giving you enough information with the um, uh, the guidelines that we're setting up to follow along, as well as the weekly the weekly uh, videos. We are going to be going through, um, you know, because this is for education. We're going to be going through those. You know what? What were the um, uh, what were the uh, the trade setups for this week? Let's see. Let's see what happened. And if something you know went out and required an adjustment, let's play it out. Let's let's show how it's done. Um, in, you know, in the actual um, analysis program with you know with data with real you know trading data, obviously uh, option that explores what I use, and that um, gives you trading data every five minutes. So. Um, that, that'll be um, some pretty good uh, uh, educational information on a weekly basis for, for the actual trades, trade setups that we're doing. And then again, we'll be adding more strategies um, that you can pick and choose trades from those as well. Um, let's look through a few more questions here. 
Uh, well, just while you're looking at it, Amy, let me just uh, say that I uh, that that you know for the subscribers, uh, the additional information that we give will will include some of the uh, you know some of the criteria that we use and some of the details for uh, picking the stocks. I mean, if you just throw darts at the at a uh, uh, newspaper at the Wall Street Journal, uh, that, that is not the way to do this. And we'll discuss uh, some of the criteria that we use and why. And um, uh, that, that is actually a critical component of the strategy. And as far as Norm's question, we don't, uh, Norm, we don't really, we're not really trying to focus on a single lot. Obviously, each uh, subscriber, trader can do as many lots as you want. Uh, th the reason that I say that I personally never do more than a two lot is that that I have several of these on at any given time. And uh, I will launch a new one whenever there's a good opportunity, not necessarily on the on the Friday or Monday that is going to be the focus of the, uh, the focus of the service here. Like, you know, for example, as I mentioned earlier, with the, with the down move uh, today, I immediately ran my screen and I found a couple more that I really liked and I put them on. Now this, I mean, this is Monday, but if this had been Wednesday, I would do it. Um. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, uh, no, I'm actually done. Uh, okay. You can address the, uh, address the question there from Ian. Yeah, there's a few more questions here. Um, let's see here. Uh, and then I'm going to come, I'm, gonna, I'm not doing them in any order, so I'm not skipping you guys. Uh, let's see this one. Uh, I think the next one uh, is the, the planned capital. The, uh, the indication, which will be the second and third strategy. Um, we'll, uh, uh, the things that we're going to be looking at are directional plays, buying puts and calls. Uh, there's an iron condor strategy, which is completely different than any of the other iron condor strategies that I've done uh, for neutral strategies. This is a, a kind of a fun one that I'm going to be um, talking, uh, planning on um, adding to the service, as well as that um, converted, we, the caller that we actually see is a longer term trade, but we convert it to a weekly trade. So those are the types of things that we're going to be looking at. Um, can you cancel any time? Yeah, that's why we set it up with just 50% for the first month. Um, but if you stay a member, uh, if you sign up for this first week, um, the price will never go up from 99 bucks a month, which is a, a pretty big savings from the regular price. Um, I'm going to answer some of these other ones in a different way. I'll try to put recommendation. Did you see the one with the planned uh, capital for a three month trial? Uh, yeah, the plan capital, you know, to each, um, each trade, um, you know, a one lot is going to be, you know, probably margin anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500, uh, depending on the, uh, the long strike that you pick. Um, and it just depends on how many, uh, how many trades you want to do and how many um, contracts you want to do. But a single lot, the margin is expected to be for one trade about, you know, range between a one, a thousand to a 1500 as an average. Some of them a little bit more, some of them a little bit less. Um, but again, if you, uh, because the, this, this particular strategy incorporates short puts and some of the other strategies won't incorporate that, but this particular one does, um, you need to make sure that um, you have enough capital to actually own that stock or, you know, 100 shares of that stock for one lot. Um, you know, of course, the strategy itself, the, the guidelines that we're incorporating are set up so that um, you shouldn't get assigned. But, you, you know, you want to keep that in the back of your mind that this could be assigned if you don't do something, especially by Thursday. Uh, but the, again, the guidelines that we set up are set up so that you don't get assigned for a stock. So that um, hopefully answers that question. Um, another couple things, uh, OCS will be done by email. Let's see if I get down a little bit possible here. Um, uh, yes, you can focus on more than one lot, uh, but because we're going to be doing multiple, this is for, um, 
Um, we're just focusing on a single lot trade. Uh, you know, it's, it's, everybody has their own preferences. It's, you know, whatever your, your risk tolerance is, it's up to you what you want to do. Um, but these are set up as, you know, just additional income, uh, you know, small lot trades, multiple um, trade setups so that you can, you know, do multiple trades. Uh, but they can't, you know, they all kind of add up, but at least uh, if you stick small, one lot, so to speak, um, that one, any one isn't going to hurt is kind of why we, we like to stick with that. But of course, everybody has their own risk tolerance. Um, hey, thanks, bud, for signing up. That's awesome. Uh, what's the time scale for rolling out other strategies? Um, Want to uh, probably, you know, make sure that everything's rolling nice and smooth for the first month. And then uh, we plan on rolling out the other strategies um, after that, maybe maybe even sooner, but that's my guess. Let this thing kind of go for uh, a few few weeks or several weeks to, before we do that. Um, yes, there's a, in the class page, there's all, also uh, an ask tab where you can ask questions and I'll answer those. I usually get back with people within 24 hours, but the forum is what we, we really want everybody to use to kind of talk with each other. And then of course me and Dan will be chiming in every once in a while. Um, uh, when will the weekly bid be going out? Uh, I don't know. I'm probably going to be doing those on Mondays, I'm thinking. Mondays or Fridays. I'm not sure. I haven't decided exactly which day uh, that's going to go up, but I'm thinking Monday or Friday. It could be a midweek. It depends on what other strategies we have and, and um, what the best day of the week seems to be for that. So I'm going to have to discuss that with Dan. So the, the little kinks that we want to get, um, get out of those, uh, get out of this at first. Um, that was based on the three months, Dan, that was, again, that was based on, uh, what did you, I only put on maybe three per week. Um, how, what was the maximum one lot trades you put on per week, uh, Dan? For that first three uh, I, yeah, I have had as many as uh, five on at a time. Usually I'm in the uh, three to four. Uh, currently, well, actually, I, I guess I, I guess I have had on as many as uh, six because I have six on now. Okay. Dan, didn't you say I, in, I in last, Trading but... Group One that you were like limiting the stock price like 150, so the the account uh -huh. size would be like 20, so you could handle an, an, an assignment? All right. I mentioned yeah. that earlier. I, I yeah, I limited. In fact, I set up on on my screener. I set up 175 a dollar stock. So it has to be less than that. So if you got assigned that, that's seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. So you can easily do a one lot with you know twenty thousand of capital. But if you planned on doing a two or three stocks with a one lot there is always the possibility that they would all three be assigned. Now that's extremely unlikely because of our uh, protocol for rolling, but um, uh, uh, some stocks and particularly Apple, in fact, I got burned on Apple uh, once. Uh, they, they, they had an earnings announcement, you know, before, long before earnings. The Apple has a habit of that. They will come out with a, a pre-earnings announcement, maybe, you know, two weeks ahead of their actual release date. And it was not a happy announcement. And so I didn't get a sign, but I had to roll at a bigger loss than usual. And then, uh, you know, had to make that up. Uh, so these things can happen. Most stocks uh, are not going to have a significant pre-earnings announcement that that would risk the possibility of assignment. But uh, 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 you know, you'd have to check. Everybody would have to check with their broker to see how they would handle an assignment if it happened. Um. Yeah, and then uh, Ian, uh, yes, there's going to be a weekly video recap, and that you know we'll be going over uh, the trade setups that we sent out the week before, so that uh, we can you know obviously that can be used for uh, edu for education. That's what this whole thing is set up for. So we'll be kind of following through through on uh, talking about um, trades that were set up the week before and see how how they could have been uh, dealt with. Um, and then this one I did, I also kind of was wondering about this. I think you might have been talking about the callers at the time about the deltas, but the deltas for um, the short puts on these wide put credit spreads are actually a little bit higher than the 20 delta. 
uh, on some of them um, because, you know, obviously they're a very short term trade um, and some of them might only be, a, you know, one or two as close as it could be further away, but they could be as close as one or two uh, strikes out of the money. Um, so those are um, a higher delta. Than well, right. And that was why I think I mentioned earlier that I'm not really locked in onto the delta uh, per se. That's in fact, that's not even one of my criterion. I'd look at it, but I'm not locked into that. So sometimes, depending on the stock and depending on the other uh, criteria in the screener, I may be a little closer to the money. Um, what I'm looking for is to get this uh, decent premium with relatively low risk. And uh, sometimes when the volatility is low, you have to come a little closer to the money. When the volatility is higher, you can get a little farther out of the money and that will decrease your risk uh, somewhat. So I'm not really locked in on the deltas. And you know, a lot of it also depends on the particular candidate that we're looking at and the technical support uh, resistance, that kind of thing. So um, one question I did want to answer here uh, from Bill L. Will adjustments be expected midday market hours sent via text? Again, this service is not like our typical road trip and weird or 14-day um, alert services where we're getting out and kind of spoon feeding the um, exact um, uh, uh, adjustments to do exactly when they happen. This is more of what we're trying to want to do is give really the best candidates at least we can find via our screening and our analysis um, to give multiple uh, trade setups that you can take advantage of one or all or some or whatever um, what we think would be good setups for multiple strategies in this case starting off with the put wide put credit spread and then giving you um, all of the guidelines and rules for that particular strategy which are real simple to follow along with the setups that we've sent out to you. So we really want to give you some really good uh, good candidates to start off. You know, we're doing the work of, of screening, doing the analysis, coming up with some pretty good candidates that we think for that particular week, giving you multiple ones of those um, to take advantage of, giving you um, all of the guidelines to follow with that particular strategy for those setups. And then, um, and then talking about that, um, about the different trades in a weekly video recap um, but the actual deciding on which ones to take advantage of, actually placing the trades, and you know, if you're going to shoot, follow the same strike, maybe the stock has moved and that one isn't viable anymore. Um, uh, you know, following, making sure that you follow the guidelines uh, that we lay out for you um, to make the adjustments is going to be up to you. Um, we just want to make this as you know, just as easy as easy as possible to give you a lot of a lot of opportunities, a lot of setups that we feel are good together with the guidelines that we lay out for you that you can create additional um, income generation on a weekly basis. So we're going to be concentrating on giving as many great candidates um, and, you know, really simple, good, um, high probability of win type strategies and their guidelines so that you can follow along um, with these good candidates that we send out for you every week. So that's kind of what the purpose of, purpose of this is, a little bit different than the other uh, alert services. And just I'm for sorry. purposes of clarification, we want to make sure everybody understands that this is not a strategy that, uh, that you would never, never have to make an adjustment. Uh, you will need to roll these and on the other strategies that that Amy will bring out, there will be some required adjustments on those. Not, not too many, because as she said, we want to keep this very simple, but it, it would be misleading to uh, have anybody think that you put these on and at the end of uh, uh, five days, you take your money and that, and that happens 100% of the time. Not exactly like that, but the roles are easy. They're not, they're not all that frequent. Um, sometimes it's exactly the opposite. As we showed, you can take the trade off uh, the following day. In fact, I had a couple last week that I put on. I can't remember which ones they were right now. Shopify, I think, was one of them. I put on, I took it off the following day and got 90, you know, 90 percent of my uh, credit. And so that that happens fairly frequently. 
And in fact, I just now put another Shopify on today that uh, popped out. So uh, but this is a fairly sort of a fluid kind of strategy and it's easy, but you can't lapse into a coma and be successful with this. Right, right. And then the other strategies, again, we're gonna be adding other strategies that are completely different. Um, uh, so they all kind of, um, you know, complement each other, so to speak, and some be more something that you guys, uh, one person likes than another. So there's going to be plenty of, plenty of uh, different trade setups uh, to be able to take advantage of and, you know, that you can pick and choose from and learn from, and uh, which will be, you know, part of the weekly, the weekly videos. It'll be, be kind of fun, too. So, but again, you know, we really want to encourage you guys, too, in the course, to go to the forum and talk with each other about the trades that you take and some people might take different strikes um, just to see how things are going so um, so that's it I think we kind of went over our hour uh, I hope you guys uh, you know are excited about this as we are um, it's, you know kind of fun we, we've been talking about weeklies for a long time we've heard a lot of um, uh, people ask about it so it's kind of nice to kind of fun to finally be putting something out there on it so uh, that's all I've got anybody else well, thanks, Amy. Thanks, Dan. Uh, we've already had a few people sign up. So the the discounted rate, again, expires at midnight Eastern on Sunday. So if you're thinking about it, you know, you're only risking 50 bucks and uh, the, the, you know, one good trade will, uh, will pay that back and more. So it's a pretty low, low threshold, good investment, and uh, you lock in a charter rate that'll never be that low again. So it's a uh, a good opportunity and uh, I'm sure Dan and Amy will come up with some uh, some nice trades going forward. I wanted to mention one other thing I forgot to mention. Uh, the month will start next Monday, uh, not this Monday. So we're just giving a week to sign up, but your month, uh, your 50% your off month will start uh, as of next Monday. Sorry, Dan. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say that, uh, uh, yeah, I think that Amy's going to have uh, several good strategies and several good choices. And then if we did add the collar strategy, that would not exactly be a weekly unless you sold a weekly put against your collar. But, uh, sound, uh, you know, we're trying to, uh, to have uh, directional trades with limited risk. So that's the, uh, the common thread here, I think. Uh, the trades are directional but they're not directional in the sense of, you know, buy a debit spread or something, uh, although they could be, uh, but, uh, you know, whatever we do, it's going to have limited risk. All right. All righty. Well, I'll uh, get this posted and remind everybody that the deadline uh, is expiring as it gets closer so you don't forget. And uh, again, thanks, Amy and Dan, and I look forward to the new service. So uh, congratulations on the launch. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Tom. All right. We'll see everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.